Come on, man. But ha and I don't mean to be insulting, but having been around a bit, my hunch is that you're going to get fucked because I've seen you get fucked a lot and I've never seen Logan get fucked once. <clears throat> Hopefully I can do this all tonight so I don't have to stretch out the recording. So a spoiler warning here, since I'll be discussing the final episode of Succession in detail, there will obviously be spoilers. I'm assuming if you're here, you've watched the full series already, so I won't be wasting any time on recap or explaining the story of the previous seasons. Episode 10 of Season 4 of HBO Succession aired March 28th and has brought to a close what I would consider to be the greatest television show currently airing. As much as I love Barry and the boys, Succession's got to take the cake for me. Thank you, Greg. Yes! 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 Now, with the finale finally here, a lot of people are upset that the show didn't end the way they wanted to, and a lot of their little fan theories didn't come true. No, Jerry didn't use her insider knowledge to threaten and destroy the company unless her, they made her CEO. No, Greg doesn't play his way to the top and complete his arc by firing Tom. No, Logan didn't fake his death and made a surprise return in the finale to show that the entire situation has been a test for the kids? What? And no, Kendall doesn't become CEO and look into the camera and smile and say, I guess this was really my succession as L to the OG begins to play and the camera zooms out and Kendall's sitting in the North Tower of the World Trade Center the date the September 11th just. Myself and most people expected the show to end in a more predictable way, where the siblings band together against Gojo, prevent Matson from buying the company and instill Kendall as CEO once and for all, where afterward maybe he suffers from success or abuses his power to push everyone else out of the company or something, I don't know, kind of like Godfather Part 2's ending. Now this ending would have been fine. It's safe, it's obvious, it's the safest route any regular show would have taken. If I asked ChatGTP to generate a succession series finale, this would probably be it. And this is exactly what the episode seemed like it was building towards up until its final moments where it completely pulls the rug out from under you. The siblings have finally reconnected and Shiv decides to double cross Matson after hearing word of him betraying her deal. They agree to make Kendall CEO, they rekindle their lost childhoods together, they band together and go into the vote all agreeing to take down Matson, yada yada yada, but before you could say fuck, fuck off, off, Shiv gets cold feet, turns the table on the brothers and votes to sell the company. Boom. Kendall's out, Roman's out, Frank's out, Carl's out, Matson owns the company, Tom's CEO, Shiv's trapped in a loveless marriage and turns out everyone was in the North Tower on September 11th. I'm, 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 kidding, I'm kidding about the last part. But Greg's safe, and that's all that matters. With such an unexpected and fucking devastatingly tragic turn of events, it's very easy to see the mixed reception this finale is getting, with some even claiming it's just as bad as Game of Thrones finale. And let me tell you, as Logan Roy would say, the people making these claims are not, not serious, serious people. people. Because nothing is as bad as Game of Thrones finale. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? <laughs> Succession's finale is not a happy ending, which is why a lot of people aren't liking it despite how perfectly it really is. It's a Shakespearean tragedy and the perfect encapsulation of the entire series, and the key to understanding it is to realize what Succession's really about. Succession has always been a family drama first, and the company or fight for who becomes CEO came second. The Roys are horrible, broken people who came from cold and unloving households who are constantly fucking each other over for a chance to get an ounce of praise from their tyrannical father. I'm sure she'll be in touch, Con. You know what, it's fine. Really? Yeah. The good thing about having a family that doesn't love you is you learn to live without it. What? Connor, that's You're not... You're all chasing after Dad, saying, Oh, love me, please love me. I need love, I need attention. Well, I think that's the opposite of what just happened. You're needy love sponges. And I'm a plant that grows on rocks and lives off insects that die inside of me. Jesus Christ, God. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! They have no idea how to love others or be loved. They can't open up, talk to each other about anything, or put their differences aside for the greater good of the company, or even the country, for a moment. 
Even hugging each other feels like an alien and unnatural act because their constant lust for power and control of the company insurmountably surpasses any basic human emotion they would feel towards each other. We've seen this time and time again in a hundred different times over the show. Their sibling rivalry is so deep that of course they would never band together, even when they needed to the most. Let's say in the finale, if they did finally all band together in a heroic moment and instill Kendall as CEO to save everyone, that would feel way more like a betrayal of the characters and an unnatural turn of fate than what ended up happening. You saw how reluctant they were to give the position up to Kendall the night before. Do you really think, after four seasons of them constantly blocking Kendall from becoming CEO, despite him objectively being the best choice out of the three, that in one night they would just give it to him? Every single time Kendall has come close to being CEO, it's been blocked by them. Even when they have it on straight up paper in Logan's will, they still manage to invalidate it. And since he said, I mean, I mean he has said. I mean, Ken, sure, man, I get it, but like, this this thing is old and you've tried to put him in jail like 12 times since then, so. I, I wonder what would the, you know, the underlining or the crossing out and the unknown age of the document isn't essentially moot. You know, it's an impossible to decipher. Well, it sure as fucking shit doesn't say Shiv. Of course, when he's the closest he's ever gotten to CEO, Shiv and even Roman would have a change of heart last minute because that's just the type of people they are. Even after they seemingly all reconnected as siblings for the one time in their life in that beautiful kitchen scene earlier in the episode, which is why Kendall's complete breakdown and shedding of all professionalism in the total act of desperation is so heart-wrenching to watch. Easy not to just let me now. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's stupid. We, we all get something here. I mean, you're voting against yourself. You realize that? Uh, mm. Shiv, mm. Shiv, listen, please. I beg you, listen. I can do this. I don't think you'd be good at it. For fuck's sake, Shiv! This doesn't make, like, logic! Where's the logic? No, I just don't think you'd be good at it. I feel like... If I don't get to do this... I, I, I feel like... That's it. Like, I might... I might uh, like, I, I might die. Please. Please. The company is all he has, and becoming CEO is all he has ever wanted in life. And now, just seconds before that was going to be a reality, it's ripped from him and he loses everything. And as a side note, Jeremy Strong's performance in this scene is simply unreal. This of course all goes back to the core themes of the show being tied in family drama rather than just business. After his primary goal in life and ownership of his dad's company evaporated within a second, Kendall's left with nothing to live for. Maybe he'll start a new business down the road and try to build himself back up, or maybe he's going to throw himself off that ledge and kill himself. Who knows, it's a brutal end to his character arc. As Logan says, these are not serious people. They're entitled Nepo babies who think they're entitled to Logan's entire self-made company and fortune just on name alone. We are bullshit. We are not bullshit. We are bullshit. You are bullshit. You're fucking bullshit. Man, I'm fucking bullshit. She's bullshit. It's all fucking nothing. Man, I'm telling you this because I, I know it, okay? We're nothing. Shiv's decision to sell Waystar to Gojo has instantly turned a fan favorite character into one of the most hated characters in television history. But this decision doesn't come out of nowhere like a lot of people are saying it does. Throughout this entire show, Shiv has to struggle with being a woman in this suffocatingly testosterone-dominated business. In order to get anything done, she has to be conniving and brutal without any remorse. Ew, in a hungry. Well, if you can't handle it, then fuck off. Who are you? I'm Shiv fucking Roy. And I'm gonna have two very grateful people, the vice president and my father. The whole purpose of siding with Matson to get Gojo to buy Waystar was to plant her as CEO because it's the only way she'll ever be able to get that position. And Matson literally betrays the deal they had together because she was too strong for him and he didn't like it. Dad? You wanna do it? Yes. Yes, of course. I would be interested. If it's real. This is real. Yes, of course. Dad, I can do it. Shiv realizes if Kendall becomes CEO, it'll be the same shit as with the rest of the series. Constantly sidelined and not taken seriously by him and Rome. 
so she chooses to be the wife of the CEO instead, which ultimately might give her and Tom's kid a chance at CEO in the future. It's a stretch, but better than the current situation she has with her brothers. As for Tom becoming CEO, this genuinely was an insane twist I did not see coming, but in a good way, not like stupid fucking Bran the Broken becoming King of Westeros. Throughout this entire season, Tom has changed radically from a bumbling fun punching bag for the other siblings, who once in a while will make a serious business decision, usually to the detriment of the company. Uh, no sir. That was the only two hour period in which you did not send an email to Mr. Hirsch with the title, you can't make a tomlet without breaking some Greggs. You sent the same email to him 67 times in one evening. I guess it was a joke. <laughs> right. To a nervous, hate-filled husk of his former self. Tom's relationship with Shiv and camaraderie with Logan was all he had to keep him up in the very high position he had at Waystar. He had that security and safety net so he could be a bumbling doofus and get away with it. But in season 4, his marriage with Shiv has pretty much been disintegrated, and Logan drops dead in episode 3. Both of his safety nets are gone, and with the Gojo acquisition on the horizon and Matson threatening to fire him, he's in serious trouble. The stress of losing his job, his relationship failing, and being in charge of ATN as well is destroying him. Matson essentially pushes him into a corner so that he can easily bend him to his will. Tom will do whatever it takes to please Matson to keep his job, and Matson needs an American CEO to serve as his puppet for the company. It's a genius play from Matson and fits perfectly with Tom's regular method of conducting business, which is kissing the asses of the most powerful people and climbing the corporate ladder that way. Tom becoming CEO is the perfect encapsulation of both Matson and Tom's characters, because to Matson, it's just another smart business move to have an easily manipulatable puppet at the top, and Tom, because his ass kissing has finally gotten him to the very top of the ladder. Shiv reluctantly decides to continue being Tom's wife after directly being the cause of everything falling apart, fulfilling the tragic cycle of Waystar CEO's wives being trapped in broken, loveless marriages, dooming her to be just as emotionless and incapable of love as her mother was. After a whole season of scheming to get Matson to buy the company and become CEO, it completely blew up in her face and she became the person she hates most because of it. Outside of Matson and his team, Tom, Connor, and Greg, it seems like the only person to really get somewhat of a happy ending here is Roman. In a lot of ways, Roman was the worst off out of the three. Being the youngest and last in line for everything, being so emotionally stunted and holding so much resentment towards the other siblings for being mistreated as a child, Okay, I get it. No, you're gonna like Big Brother it right now. That's what you're gonna do? No, like what? Oh, like when, you know, if you want roast chicken and I wanted steak, we always had chicken. Because you you freak out, you tantrum, so they thought... I would fucking tantrum because I never had a fucking steak. Well, I think they got scared if, you know, if you tantrum, then you'd think you'd won, so they couldn't let you yeah, have I never steak. won, it was always fucking chicken. Come on, Dad. What are you sorry for? Sorry for hitting Rome when he was a kid? Oh, no. I mean, everyone hit me. I'm fucking annoying. He's created such a toxic and unrealistic character of a witty, doesn't give two shits, know-it-all persona to try and boost his image in the company, when in reality he's an incredibly emotional and insecure person. And there's something about him being into humiliation for a bit. Uh, there's a lot to unpack with Roman, but for now, he's free of the company and fighting for the role of CEO a position he never really wanted and just acted like he wanted. He's finally free to be himself. He seems so relieved at the end, and his brief reluctance to vote against the sale of the company might mean that he wouldn't have even minded if he lost the company in the first place. Roman? For once in his life, his future is left up to him and he can do whatever he wants with his life now, now that he's free from Waystar and the succession battle. It's a little glimmer of hope at the end that at least one of the three main Roys has the opportunity to better himself and change his former ways after escaping the company. I mean, just look how good Connor ended up, maybe Roman will be just like him. Succession's finale marks the end of Waystar Royco and the total changing of the tides of America as a whole. The patriarch is dead. There's a new, ultra-far-right president leading the country that Kendall and Roy mistakenly helped get elected. The family-run Waystar Worko has been bought out by a foreign tech company and an egotistical yuppie who doesn't give a shit about them. And the senior staff and siblings are all no longer in charge of the company their father built. 
Roman's finally free of the toxic persona he created, Kendall's left without any purpose in life anymore, and Shiv's destined to become her mother. A happy ending was so close to happening, but the toxic patterns these terrible people constantly perpetuate that they never learn from reared their ugly head again, and everything was ruined. We anoint you. You get the bauble. The counterpoint to that was the lovely scene we called Meal Fit for a King. That sense of recaptured innocence. Kids just being kids, no matter what their income. Everything seemed possible, and yet... Wear your crown, sir. Oh, no. No, 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 My understanding of the show has always been that it's a tragedy, and therefore every moment of hope like that is so cruel because you're just waiting for that shoe to drop waiting for their essential natures to be exposed and to break your heart again. It's not a happy ending because these people don't deserve one. They're greedy, heartless scum with daddy issues and the worst personifications of the people capitalist America creates. They were incapable of change and that was their tragedy. It's fucking devastating, but goddammit, it's the perfect ending this outstanding show deserves. Oh, man, I'm going to miss this show. But well, my man Connor made it out without any harm. Fuck yeah, baby, where my con heads at? Just to see if you're better. New York is cold, but I like where 